Hash mark. I, Bait Engineer. My name is Daniel. Some call me the Data Generator, and I'm building Pipeline Data Engineering Academy, the world's first data engineering bootcamp. Not one of today's data engineers grew up as a kid imagining becoming one. I definitely didn't. That made me think about how others look at our line of work, and I feel the best way to explain it is through asking a handful of practitioners about their journey and how they work look like. Who are you and uh, what do you do now? My name is Oleg. I'm from uh, Ukraine originally. Now I work uh, in Berlin at um, Hey Jobs. And um, yeah, this is a company where we do performance marketing for like skilled jobs. How did you end up as a data engineer? That's an interesting story because, yeah, you're completely right. We are not born as data engineers. Originally, I have a mobile development background, so I was Android developer um, as I started my career. And uh, when I joined um, even the current company, I was a mobile developer, but fairly soon I switched to backend development team because uh, yeah, as a mobile developer, I realized that I had sort of like a crisis of my professional technical interests. I realized that I don't enjoy touching user-facing parts anymore, you know, and I was in a constant look how to develop my career further. And uh, yeah, I had the chance to jump into backend developments. It was a marketing engineering team where we automated different marketing-related stuff. And uh, I worked on the fairly classic setup like Ruby on Rails app with, you know, Redis, Sidekick, admin panel, dashboard stuff. I really enjoyed it and I thought, oh, okay, so that's probably something I like more than mobile development. And I started developing in this field. But then even while being a backend developer, I realized that, you know, I still tend to enjoy more things, which I call backend of backend, you know, like all these offline jobs. So I started tinkering more with uh, sidekick tasks and, you know, doing orchestrated jobs even before I knew they called pipelines sort of. And uh, at the same time, we had another team, which was called uh, data science and engineering led by very good uh, a manager and friend of mine. Well, we talked and he told me about what's going in the team and uh, that they have this uh, airflow deployment and they work on machine learning pipelines and they, they do data processing. And I realized that, yeah, that, that's probably something I really want to do, you know, in depth. I switched to that team. So thanks to my company, I had the chance to do that. I started as, as a Python engineer, working on pipelines, working on Airflow. For a while, I was working on Airflow pipelines. And then I, I also realized myself, you know, shifting more towards integrational tasks. I, I became responsible for Airflow deployment itself at company and, um, you know, different integrations with uh, EMR, AWS Batch and, and different uh, AWS products. And then sort of this team, evolved. And at some point, we realized that, you know, these tasks that we were doing are not anymore just uh, sort of maintenance uh, tasks or just, you know, fixing things or deploying things. It somehow became a real part of full-time workload at my job. So at some point, we started thinking about establishing data platform. And then over time, this basically data platform evolved into a separate thing. And now it's a separate team. So I'm happy now working on the data platform, you know, responsible for all the related stuff for maintenance, for basically unblocking other teams working on their data tasks. Thank you for sharing your story with us. What projects, tools or, or trends do excite you these days? I'm particularly busy in my mind uh, now with everything related to data quality and data monitoring and data discovery. Out of this, uh, specifically, uh, data quality is a challenging problem now and out on the market, uh, yet to my knowledge, not that many tools which are solving this problem. For instance, we are looking now into great expectations. Mm -hmm. There is this new tool uh, by Gleb Mejansky called uh, DataFold, where you can compare how data changes depending on the changes in your branches, right? So that looks very exciting as well. Or like few other tools, like I just recently heard about this big guy. I didn't have a chance to take a look at this. What's your outlook? Like, how do you see the role of data engineering changing in the next years? What I can say is that in the future, the technical threshold for entering this data engineering field will be lower and lower because tools are evolving fairly fast. In a few years, even smaller companies uh, will be faster into start using those tools and maybe ready to use data platforms will be more common thing, not sort of privileged now for mm -hmm. a smaller group of engineers out there. 
Thank you. In addition to this, I can also add that I'm not sure what will happen to this, what I will mention now, but I really hope that the attitude will change to the data in terms of um, ethics of data collection and more attention to keep data secure. Because, yeah, that's a very important topic. Companies collect data, lots of data, and then companies, as you say, collapse, and then they sell this data to another company. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure what will happen to this, but I really have uh, this deep hope that community will start uh, talking more about this and it will become an important topic and we will dedicate sort of more time and our attention and effort to sort of tackle those challenges. I think this is like a very noble and wise thing we should all do. What piece of advice would you give to someone who's just starting out in data engineering? I'm fairly new in the field myself, so I'm constantly learning what I can tell. I'm not sure whether it works for everyone, but what worked for me is deep dive into the topic, sort of surround yourself with uh, different uh, learning materials and uh, try to understand environment, try to understand community, what's going on there, like what are tools out there. Data engineering podcast is every week in my headphones, right? So that's how I actually learned about uh, you and your community in Berlin. So I was very happy about that. So don't be afraid of the breath of it i would say first try to turn unknown unknowns into known unknowns mm -hmm. and then you know tackle them sort of one by one you know okay so that's a huge field and actually that was another problem that i faced uh, data overload so in order to tackle this try to first learn what's the scope of the things out there and then you know tackle them one by one so go in depth for for a specific topic and also it's important for specialization right so every engineer wants to be this sort of t-shaped so know a little bit about different things and in depth about one particular field so yeah don't forget about this read books read articles listen to podcasts i think what i found out that you know data engineering community is somehow very nice and there are lots of good people sharing their knowledge yeah it's, it's a very friendly group of people i'd say do you listen to music while you are in the flow yeah when i go doing deep work i usually listen to some electronic you know i'm not crazy with genres i'm quite mm -hmm. conservative i have maybe like five favorite bands yeah musicians that i listen to like bonobo 65 days of static maybe forest words this sort of stuff there is a recent discovery i'm happy with the guy is called say uh, lessing i think it's hard to pronounce but uh, i think he's a swiss electronic musician who recorded also sounds while traveling in transsiberian and he combined it incorporated it into his music and it's it's really awesome now. Thank you. I will check this out. If you are a data engineer and you feel like sharing your story, reach out. I'd be happy to chat with you. Hashmark, I, data engineer.